Back here behind this industrial complex, there's just no reason whatsoever for them and their vehicle to be here. I believe I have a vehicle right off the edge of this pier. We're right around 47 feet. It makes sense. Drive it right off the edge of this pier. And I'll tell you right now, every vehicle that was put in here at this location is on purpose. And if this is the vehicle we're looking for, now we're talking foul play. Right there, right there, right there, right there. What is that? What is that? But first, all new on NBC 10 News at 5, the search for a missing cold case couple takes a team of divers from YouTube to the banks of the Schuylkill River this afternoon. They renewed their search for a couple from South Jersey missing for more than 17 years. Danielle Imbo and Richard Patron Jr. were last seen at a bar on South Street in February of 2005. They were here with friends having a really good time Saturday night. And at 11.30 p.m., they decided to leave. They stated to friends, Richard did, that he parked nearby. They were leaving to their vehicle and he was taking Danielle home to Jersey. Did they go to Jersey or did they go to Richard's home on top of Viking Bakery up in Ardmore, which is about 15 minutes away? I'm very hopeful for this location. This is, this is a location that we haven't checked. That's a wheel. That's a wheel. You see it? It's a wheel clear today. This vehicle's been in here for a while. Danielle and Richard could be directly below us right now, Carson. Yeah, he's on it. I see him. It's severely, debris is all around it. Yeah. It looked black, but once I started ripping on it, it's blue. It's definitely not the vehicle we're looking for, but we, we, gotta, we gotta do it to find out, you know what I mean? I am really optimistic that everything we have done today, we are getting closer and closer to Danielle and Richard. Just got out of the FBI meeting. As far as that goes, it was off the record 100%. Uh, they are in support of us. I can tell you that the theories that we are working and that you guys know that we are working, they agree with. The very first location we're heading to right now is Strawbridge Lake, which we just pulled on the 38, which they would have been coming to in this lane of travel towards the Mount Laurel area where her, her home was. 38 is directly above us. Is the vehicle right here, it's dropping back down seven feet. This is the route, they could have come right off of here. Getting a really good image here. Seven feet, man. Right, I'm, I'm, I'm confident that they're not here. two and three feet. Three point six, three point five feet all the way through here. It's three point five, three point six feet, way too shallow to conceal a pickup truck. You know, we're looking for a 2001 Dodge Dakota, black in color. So now, right now we are en route to Cooper River Lake, which is gonna take into the theory that they came across the Ben Franklin Bridge down on 30, and 30 runs right along Cooper River Lake. right here this would make sense it might be on a Delaware man it might be right where Jared started we've done a lot of work on this case I feel like we are really on the right path to finding Danielle and Richard I really do but we have to stay another day we, we, we got to continue to work on locations really go over what we've done so far what we're missing and really what we need to wake up tomorrow and knock out 
Over the past 48 hours, we have severely narrowed down the scope of our search area, as well as dissected the entire case and the possible routes Richard and Danielle could have taken to take Danielle home and also over to maybe they changed their mind and they went to Richard's house. As you see behind me, we have everything marked on here. Everything in green are possible routes, main routes, and everything that you see here in orange is everything that we have searched, including these ponds over here near Danielle's home, the Cooper River Lake along Route 30, and the Schuylkill River basing our theory that maybe they changed their mind and rent to Richard's house above Viking Pastries. With everything that we've compiled and done over the past 48 hours and the intelligence that we've received from multiple agencies, we feel we are really close. Stay tuned. This is one episode you are not going to want to miss. Of the people that I find underwater, in my opinion, I feel as though 50% of them could have escaped if they would have had a window breaker. Because a few things that I have seen with my own eyes over time as we have done this, is I have found people crawling from the front seat to the middle seat, trying to get out as they are holding on, looking for their last breath of air, looking for any way out. And if they would have just had a window breaker, I feel like they could have made their way out. So again, the link is in the description or jump over to adventureswithpurpose.com and pick yourself up a window breaker or two today. The volunteer divers from the group Adventures with Purpose are trying to solve the cold case involving Danielle Imbo and Richard Patrone, who disappeared in 2005 after a night out at a bar with friends. Let's hurry up and get this boat into the water. I'm very optimistic on how far our search has come and what we're about to search. If there's a missing aspect of our search and this searches that we've done so far, it's gonna be exactly what we're about to get into right now. This is the Ben Franklin Bridge behind me. South Philadelphia, we're right off of Columbus Boulevard. We're gonna work our way from right here all the way down to the Betsy Ross Bridge, which is just out of sight around the bend up there that you're looking at right now. And on our way up, we're gonna stay about 50 feet from the shoreline over there. And then on our way back down, when we're done, we'll, we'll go out another 50 feet or so that way we're covering a, a, a big distance out. This current's moving. If they came in here during high tide, that vehicle could be out really, really far and not where we suspect it to be. Got a parking lot right here on this pier. only two feet in here. Keep it moving. We saw the bottoms of those uh, piers over there. And another thing we have to watch out for now we know is, it, it, and we learn every case that we work. We learn, we're constantly learning and evolving, adapting and innovating. The Jimmy Amabile case, 
and they built a marina on top of them. We're talking about a case that's 17 years old here in South Philly. Are any of the new structures out here possibly built on top of Danielle and Richard? That's one thing I'm definitely gonna be looking for moving forward with this case. And any of these new peers, uh, we've gotta be really careful with scanning in between them and um, you know, getting different angles to uh, see the, you know, the shadows, sonar casts shadows behind objects. So we need different angles to uh, you know, get a good vision of um, what's beyond those shadows when, when we're scanning underneath these piers and structures out here along this river today. And then we just get so shallow in here, three feet, there's, there's nothing in here, which is, it's gonna save us a lot of time in and out of these little pier areas. Right now we're only at two feet, but we're coming up to an area where there's a, a overpass to Columbus Street. Uh, not even really an overpass, it, it, the, the water just comes right up to the edge of the road up here. And, when we have to check to see if there's a hole down there. I mean, like we did yesterday when we were in Strawbridge Lake, you know, it was really shallow. And then when we got right near the road underneath that tunnel, it dropped down to 13 feet. I mean, you can see behind us, like how uh, close the road gets to the waterway right here. Is there a hole right there? Oh, we're hitting bottom a little bit. We're hitting bottom a little bit. We're gonna have to turn around right here. You can see that grate right there protecting that drain. It's only about 18 inches. It's like skeletal remains up here. What is that? head didn't see the head all we saw was the ribs so better safe than sorry we're getting back out here into the current and uh, we'll notch our speed back up to right about four miles an hour uh, and, and that's a little bit faster than we've scanned in the past. However, you know, we, we've, the way our systems are calibrated now, it allows us to go a little bit faster, which, which is nice. You know, the faster we can go and still accurately read uh, the imagery that's being projected to us, you know, the, the more locations we could possibly search within a day or a big location like this, search it quicker. Uh, we're coming up right now behind the uh, Rivers Casino directly in front of us right here. Uh, we will have to pause here uh, in about two hours. Uh, we have a meeting with Rolling Stone. Uh, it's great that everybody's you know reaching out and, and wanting to cover the amazing purpose that we encompass. Absolutely amazing. I'm honored to uh, meet with all of the different networks and you know the journalists, magazines, and and, and, and so forth. It's amazing. It is. Uh, I'm very proud to be a part of it. Honored. And uh, any time that we can uh, take a moment to you know meet with anybody that's willing to cover our purpose, absolutely thrilled to be able to do so. Uh, Rolling Stones it got quite a reach. The very I, I grew up reading the, their magazine so who would have thought that you know i would be a part of a um, purpose that rolling stone would be interested in it's pretty damn cool because of you guys we are in rolling stone without you our supporters none of this would be possible none of it you guys supporting jared in his early adventures cleaning up the environment pop cans all of his different river adventures, embracing him 
and how awesome he is, because he truly is. Not only is he my best friend, but he's one of the most influential people uh, that I've ever met and that has been a part of my life. And uh, uh, from the moment I've met him, he's made me a better person. I constantly learn from him. Everything I do here, I've learned from him. Uh, I've digested it, and you know we we're we're on a path to really big things, and we're helping many people along the way. I like it. I love it. We have some type of old, well, there's an old access here, it looks like. But we're only three feet deep in there. Not, uh, not what we need at all. to the left. It's just a... No, it's not a car. Yeah. Just uh, something from over there, from one of the sites. And then right there in the middle of the side scan, you can see the other image. It's not casting a shadow, but it's another little rock. And there's another one there coming up along. There's just so many different variables that uh, we're, we have to take into consideration when we're working these cases and just keep track of them. This is a case that we've done a lot of work on and I don't feel like we're chasing a dead end. I don't feel like this is a case that may be foul play or may you know, not be the type of case for us. The more we work it, the more I really do feel like we're getting closer. And I know that in my heart that they're here. We just gotta find them. They've just been in a horrible accident. That's it. Horrible accident and you know, if, if you do want to consider foul play, they weren't killed for their 2001 Dodge Dakota with a bunch of miles on it. I also consider that if it is foul play, it's possible their vehicle's underwater. Dumped here in a Delaware or one of these bodies of water we just haven't made it to yet. Seven feet, eight feet, wow, 10 feet. It, we just fell into a big hole right here. So you never know, you, you, you gotta check all of this stuff. You will never, 14 feet deep right here. I have what I thought was a vehicle, so I'm just getting a better, uh, a better position to come over it. We should be coming up on it right now. Back up to four feet, it's a really big hole right there. Looked like I saw a wheel. Right there, right there, right there, right there. What is that? What is that? I don't think it's big enough. Right here on live scope. Should be right coming up. What is that? What is that right there? I think it's big enough. Alright. If you guys haven't already done so, take the chance to subscribe to everything that it is we're doing. We're out here trying to make the impossible happen. We're doing good things for agencies, families, 
please stop what you're doing. If you have not already subscribed, it's free. What are you waiting for? I believe I have a vehicle. I believe I have a vehicle. It makes sense. I drive it right off the edge of this pier. And I'll tell you right now that if, if this, there's every vehicle that was put in here at this location is on purpose. And if this is the vehicle we're looking for, now we're talking foul play. This is not a good location for their vehicle to be if this is it. What is that right there? See it? See it? That's definitely an SUV. I feel like there's quite a few of them here. We might have a truck. There's just no reason whatsoever for them and their vehicle to be here. Or, you know, if a vehicle's here, it's not for good reasons. This is just stolen, dumped vehicles. Or, you know, there's, there's some, there's definitely some uh, uh, foul play aspects to what's going on here. We need to make sure that we rescan these vehicles. And I'm taking these vehicles very serious. However, we only have a little bit of time left to search on this case before we have to go and help the next family. So it's very important that we, I'm not gonna, I, I wanna use this very carefully as not wasting our time because we care about what these are. And if these aren't a truck, if one of these vehicles is a truck, we're diving immediately. We're gonna get some better scanning on to rule out whether or not these vehicles are trucks or not, and or different objects that just are looking like vehicles, and then we're gonna keep it moving on. But regardless, if the SUV that's out here, we're marking it, we'll we, be, we will be back, and I will also notify the Marine Lieutenant who I'm working very closely with, so that they can come and take care of this vehicle and figure out what it is. We need to really utilize our time as efficiently as possible that we have left on the case that we're working. You know, we really wanna find Danielle and Richard and we really wanna keep it moving and I'd really hate to waste the afternoon diving on just an SUV that we know is an SUV and most likely just a stolen dump. Let's go scan this a little bit more and uh, see if one of these are a pickup truck. Definitely a pile of debris down there, and I'm getting a really good reading of the debris. We might be looking at a pile of debris. We got what appears to be two really big chunks of concrete right there. The structures that used to be up there are no longer there. So is that what we're looking at? The structures that used to be up here on the shore that aren't there anymore? It's definitely an SUV. And I'm, I'm working on uh, this debris pile again now that I floated back down here. That's like three feet tall right there. We know we have one verified vehicle in here. All right. That is definitely a very old car. So we have a very old school car and a SUV. There's your old school car right there. Yeah, yeah. Really long, front end, it's flat on down imaging. It's not that tall at all. You, you, you can see that it's flat. The SUV is... Oh yeah. See it? Yeah, I see it. Not a pickup truck. We're gonna spin around it. We're gonna spin around it. It's like a Suburban, Tahoe, 
possibly. Really good images of it. Not a pickup truck, definitely an SUV. Both of those are SUVs. We have two SUVs and a really old car. And then here's your second SUV right here. Technology is amazing. You can see the whole cab of it. Now we just need to set these waypoints. There we go. I'm marking it right now. That's one. And then here's another right there. See it? See it? See it? See it? That's another. And then we have the old car. Two cars. It is an upside down car. Two SUVs. A really old car and an upside down car. So we have four cars here right now. Right there. Right off the edge of that. Now this is the one we have to be careful with. The one that's upside down. So we know the two are SUVs. We know that this vehicle upside down could be a pickup truck. Absolutely. Should be coming up any moment. Right there. Right there. that that's a pickup truck. Absolutely no way. It's right there. Hold on, coming over it. All right, here we go, here we go. See that? I'm gonna spin it, I'm gonna pivot around it. Five feet in height. This is the old, old car right there. And then old, old car. And then right straight out here. Two SUVs, old, old car, upside down car, and possibly a fifth car. Right there. That's the upside down car. Two of the vehicles we know are SUVs. One of the vehicles is an extremely old car, big body car. Uh, the upside down car is just like a car. The other one is really messing with me. That fifth one is, we, we got to get some better imaging on it, you know. If we have to dive, we're, if we're going in the water to dive a car, we're diving on them all. Um, the only way we're not diving today is unless we get really good imaging of that fifth car upside down to prove it. it's not a truck. All right, so I got your message. Yeah, mm -hmm. uh, two of them I know are SUVs. Uh, okay. One of them is a really, really old, long, big body car. And uh, I have two vehicles upside down. One of them looks like a pickup truck. Okay. Um, so, you know, with the two vehicles that are upside down, that's really what we want to focus on. Obviously, they could all potentially lead to something, um, but, you know, we, we're looking for a Dodge Dakota. We know we're looking for, sure. that, for that truck, and with the vehicles being upside down, I'm sure one of them could be a car, but with this type of depth and scanning, you know, we, we're definitely not, not going to... Sure. Yeah, yeah. Yep. Gotcha. 
gotcha. Yeah. So, so what are you looking for? What do you need? If there's any assistance you guys can give us on the water, that would be great. I can't get my RV and equipment trailer anywhere near this. Close. Gotcha. Yeah. Yes. If we, if we can what? get if we can get you know um, a boat in here to go off of to dive yeah. these, I'll have do that. I'll have them marked with a magnet. Um, I'm gonna, when, do you, when, when do you want to do it? it, it that is completely up to you. Um, having uh, your involvement makes things safer for us. What's that? It, Say again? Uh, having your involvement makes this safer for us. Yep. Uh, so we want to sure. be as safe as possible. Um, if this is something that you guys um, don't want to do this afternoon, we can do well, it. So, so normally, especially with the Delaware River, yeah. what we normally do is try to do slack tide. Okay. Um, because, as I said, the, with the, that the um, um, even though it may not be the channel, when that tide's moving, it's yeah. almost impossible to get down to the bottom. Yeah, um, it, it, it's it's been ripping all day, man. Yes, it, it's it's exactly. So it, it was rough. And and and, you, and I'm sure, as you know, tide you're only going to get slack tide for about maybe an hour if right. lucky. Okay. You know, half hour on each side of the change. Yeah. Um, it, uh, when do you, when is the next slack today, tide? I'm sorry? When is the next slack tide? So yeah, low tide's at 245, so there's okay. no way we're going to make it today. Okay. So do you, we want to plan first thing in the morning? Uh, we can probably do that. Um, that would probably work out. I, uh, let's see. 15. Yeah, six one half tells the other, I guess. If it works better for you, we can do it, in the, do it first thing in the morning. Yeah, yeah. For, for first thing in the morning would be great. Okay. And then what that will that will also do is allow me to continue to scan the rest of the Delaware up to the Betsy Ross, just in mm -hmm. case, just yeah. so if these don't turn out to be anything or they belong no, no, to sure. something else. We, we, we've, we've actually pulled vehicles from there uh, before, and it's, it was a typical dump ground back in back in the day. Yeah, yeah. Uh, for, for vehicles. Right, where you, the, the location right where we're at. Yes. Okay. All right. That's why you got five. That's why you got five. Yeah. There. Yeah. It, we, we start when we start pulling and we start pulling um, pieces up. Once right. We start coming apart. We're done. You know, yeah. Yeah. Old. Right. Right. It, it, exactly. And I and, and I was just sitting there telling our viewers the same thing is that, you know, typically and as much as we've scanned of this Delaware and, you know, we, we haven't found anything. And then we come up to a pier like this and then there's five right here. And it's, yep. that's typical of just a dumping ground of somebody who's been stealing cars. Yes. Um, you know, but until we get down there on these, I mean, sure. you know, we yes. we don't know, but it's it, it's a high likelihood that's what we're working with. I think right now, really, what we need to do is put a little bit more sonar on that fifth vehicle. You know, because that's that's going to be pivotal in us either wasting a lot of time from possibly finding something else. That's, I mean, that's that's what we need to do. We need to put more sonar on that fifth vehicle and see if we can do what we were just doing, was ruling them out, getting better images on them. That way we don't have to waste any more time. Coming back out, it's right out here. Right there, that's not a truck. That was a really good scan. So what we're, we're, we're on, we're like slack tied right now. So there's not a lot of current pushing us. So our scanning is a lot clearer. That is not a pickup truck. The wheels are so close to either edge of the vehicle. There's 100% not a pickup truck. Not a pickup truck, definitely a car all day long. And we're coming up here uh, on the really 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 old we came into this with one vehicle right here at this location and we ended up with five vehicles here two of them are suv two upside down cars in a very old old big body car five vehicles right here are these answers for a potential case absolutely they could be however we know we're looking for a pickup truck none of these are a pickup truck and we're running out of daylight we're running out of time that we have left to work on this particular case so we have to keep it moving i've already spoke with the marine lieutenant they know these vehicles are here they're going to authorize their dive team to train on all of these vehicles and they are going to let me know so i can let you guys know exactly what happened with these vehicles if i don't hear anything from them 
which I do. I, I fully expect to hear something from them. They are completely, completely open with working with us and making sure that these vehicles are cleared. However, they did hint that they knew about them already. So they're gonna check with previous dive teams to make sure, but we have to keep it moving. Or we have to continue to look for a pickup truck. That's what we're looking for right now. That's a car. 100% a car. I saw two. I saw two. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's two cars right there. I'm gonna circle around it. Yeah, there it is. Definitely an old, old school, like a Lincoln or um, big body. Big body car. Old Cadillac. And you gotta think, these apartments, I don't, they don't look 17 years old. They look brand new. So they were just built not too long ago. I guarantee you they're less than five years old. Oh, what's that? What's that? What's that? Some type of beam structure. Yeah, not a car. So when they build these buildings and they clear out what used to be there, a lot of times the construction debris will fall in. And a lot of what we're seeing right now in our imaging is a lot of debris, a whole lot of debris. Yeah, and you gotta understand, we're like on the back side of the industrial area yeah. where this none of this existed. You can see they're still building them. Like this used to be fields or warehouses. I don't know what used to be here. I'm not from Philly, but obviously, People felt really comfortable coming out here dumping cars. I have only been able to scan a mile of the Delaware River today, and we've already found seven cars. Seven cars up near the shoreline, basically. Imagine what has made it out into the channel. We know we're working, we're looking for a truck, so we have to carry on but it's nice to know where these vehicles are. I'm setting waypoints in the system on every single one of these vehicles that we find. It's definitely a project for the future. careful with that drop off. It's really deceptive. You can come through here and scan and not uh, not see anything at all. That's a boat right there. Oh, no. That no. triangle front front end. Yep. I think that I think there's a car there too. Yeah, right there on live scope. There's another car right there. See that? That's a car all day long. Right there. See it? Right there. Right there. Live scope. Yep. Oh, there's another one. There's another one. Boat. Right off the edge of these piers are just dumping grounds. Right here, coming up, coming up, coming up, coming up. No. Nope. 
definitely a really old, looks like a station wagon. I don't see station wagons too often anymore. These cars are just dumped and sinking right to the bottom. Right here, right here, right here, right there. Mark, 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 Mark. Got it. There's two here. Just completely deteriorated. Really, really old cars. One's upside down and then bam, back right over it. And you can see the roof of this one right there. Oh, wow. Three, three cars, three cars. We just need a pickup truck. search and investigation looking for Danielle Imbo and Richard Patron has come a long way over the last 72 hours. Not only have we been able to rule out a lot of water here in the Philadelphia area, we found 12 vehicles in a boat. Those vehicles could possibly be connected to other cases. We are going to be back for these vehicles to dive on them. It's going to be a big operation. Right now, we have to go. In the morning, we have another agency that's awaiting our arrival to assist with a cold case, including the family on that one as well. This is one disappearance that we are gonna put a lot more work in and I'm confident and very optimistic that the work that we've done over the last few days is leading us one step closer into solving the disappearance of Danielle Imbo and Richard Patron.